Our journey with elephants began with a very special elephant called Champa. We found her on the highway between Delhi and Agra. And when we used to go up and down, we'd stop to give her treats. And that's when we noticed that she had a lot of injuries and abscesses. And we started bringing her veterinary care. But that was right here, right? Um, on the way from Delhi to Agra, when we would check on the bears, right? That's right. And it was the old highway, which is not used anymore. And the amazing thing about uh, Champa was that she was very fond of people and we could really relate to her. But she had such a horrible abscess. You remember in the front right leg, she had a horrible abscess. It worried us and we wanted to try and immediately try and fix it. So we initially got into a fight with the owner who was uh, continuing to use her for elephant rides despite knowing that she was, she was so sick. What was he feeding her? Wasn't it tobacco or something? He was... To help her cope with the pain, the Mahout was actually giving her tobacco. And that was what was ruining her liver. And they would never have agreed to give us the elephant, except one day she went completely down and she was lying down. And I think the owner realized he couldn't earn from her anymore. And her abscess was so huge that we actually pushed out a bucket of pus from that injury. Yeah, it was very, very uh, traumatic. And we had to send a vet several times to go down and check. And I think we had to send an equine vet sometimes. We'd send whichever vet we could get our hands on to go and help Champa. But then she started this whole saga. You know, where we are standing today is the Elephant Conservation and Care Center. And this was a legacy left behind by Champa. She created this for us. She taught us um, you know, how, how elephants suffered, right? I think the most special thing she taught us was that uh, elephants in captivity stay in isolation. They are never allowed to meet other elephants. And the second elephant that we managed to rescue was Bola. Bola, yeah. yeah. And when Bola started coming round for, off the highway onto this little haven we had created for Champa, he started trumpeting from there and she started replying and we got really worried. We said, is it that they won't get along or what's happening? But when they got close, the bonding, the manner in which they greeted each other as if they knew each other for a long time. Yeah, and she'd never seen him before. But the, but the story of Bola was so horrific. We, we didn't think he'd live, if you remember. Yeah, absolutely. He had over 100 wounds on his body. He was thin. He'd been hit by a truck. We got a call at 3 a.m. in the morning in Delhi saying there's an elephant that's been hit. It's collapsed. It's on the ground, probably dead. And that's... Uh, that, I think that's when we responded, right? So, in fact, we got down there, checked on this elephant, and it looked like it was completely down, dead, collapsed. And so I actually had a flashlight, and I used it, and I opened the eyelid on this elephant that was down, and his eye blinked, and his eye blinked. pupil contracted. I said, damn it, this elephant is alive. So we got a police yeah. train, blocked the traffic, lifted this elephant up, and he stood. And that's yeah. how we started... Treat me. I think yeah. there were some friendly goes where to actually went and treated him for several weeks before he was fit enough even to be transported. And then we took the forest department help, the police help, and then we managed to finally get Bola here. Up to our site. It was it was a very hostile situation because they were not willing to give Bola that hidden Bola away. And that's how we managed to use our informer network. You remember the informer told us where Bola was hidden. And so we got the police and the forest department went there um, and they were trying to get the elephant out of the state. And they didn't have any paperwork for Delhi. They were trying to move him into Uttar Pradesh. And we were able to stop them, <coughs> ambush them before they could smuggle the elephant out of the state. And that's how we were able to rescue Bola. And Bola was, my God, we didn't think we'd seen an elephant in such a bad state. He had such a huge gash. On his back, you recall? Even now, he has a deformed spine because of his yeah. injuries. But the amazing thing was that he was a large elephant and he was completely blind, which is how, why he got into that accident. Because the truck hit him head on and he couldn't avoid it. He didn't see the truck. And the friendship between him and Champa. Yeah, was and I think else. we didn't nurse him as much as Champa nursed him and brought him back to life. So he used to eat from the same uh, vessel of food and... Uh, he, he just he just followed Champa everywhere around. I think they were both so deprived of social yes. company and support that they just bonded so well. And Champa helped Bola heal. Bola took a lot of support from Champa and I think they taught us so many lessons of what elephants needed. 
and that was one of the pillars of of our ability to provide care medical support and social support and care for elephants that that yeah. come to us now so the next set of elephants we got were rajesh and maya and they were rescued circus elephants again being smuggled across various state borders and the forest department sees them and then we got the, uh, we got the two elephants in our care and then we learned something more about how much of psychological and emotional deprivation these elephants go through because we couldn't make maya react or respond to anything at all she just stood still for 6 months and rajesh was weaving and uh, he was sucking his trunk a lot of stereotyping yeah i remember and he was sucking his trunk like a child sucks a thumb and he would be so distressed all the time and both of them were such beautiful large elephants and then we got phulkali yeah I, I, and you should tell them about so this yeah so i mean each of these elephants have such an incredible story with us uh, and we can talk you know till the cows come home yeah. uh, about each elephant and their incredible personalities but like for example uh, raju who was rescued from 50 years of torture suzi who was rescued from um a uh, circus where she was used she was blind and then she was disposed of she was left in a rubbish dump so she could be buried the owner didn't want to have the hassle of the cost of burying uh, her because he expected her to die almost immediately i mean these elephants have given us so much meaning and fulfillment and the ability to change their lives and so i think you know it's such a an amazing journey that we have had of with wildlife sos and helping these elephants with us and i think all of you out there can join us become a part of this team become a wildlife warrior be with us every step of the way to change the lives of these elephants and and create a uh, the healing journey w- uh, and be with us for this journey isn't it i think it'll be great if people can we join have, us that we have almost 40 elephants with us and each elephant is so unique and the story behind the elephant is so unique that uh, you visit and volunteer with us and i guarantee you you will fall in love with elephants forever So please come join us be a part of this family and we want you to come and meet these elephants yourself and uh, and uh, yeah we are going to go and spend some time with them now yeah thanks bye